Okay, good morning. This is the beginning of a new series, hopefully, of videos. And I'm driving, of course, as you can see, testing out my new head mounted camera, the Ordro 4K which I plan to use in the future for uh, all the videos in this series, if I can. And uh, I'm on my way to the northern part of town to visit one of the, it's like almost 50 Goodwills in my city, in the, uh, in the city I live in and the surrounding cities. There's over 50 of them of which I visit about, well, in the north part of town, there's four, three to five that I visit in the north part of town. There are, let's see, it's like seven, six to seven that I visit in the southern part of town. And when the temperature is much better, I uh, go to the east part of town, and there is a large number of Goodwills that I visit there. Something like close to 10, but because of the heat and the distance, um, I just don't do it at this time of year. And I don't visit much of anything on the east side of town because the Goodwills on that side of town are very spread out <clears throat> and not very good. The uh, That side of town is kind of the, I don't know, less good side of town and so the donations they get aren't very good and the, the, they're, they're just janky. Uh, I only really visit Goodwills, mostly because Goodwill has pretty much driven all the other thrift stores out of business. There are other private and other companies like uh, Savers and uh, some other, like other private stuff, but I just generally don't go to those. They're not on my route, and my experience with them is that they just don't have the stuff I'm looking for. Uh, this is gonna be a one-take video, so if I forget something, I'll have to put it in subtitles. Um, Let's see here. I'm shooting this video in 4K. Uh, that gives me the ability to do some things with the video that I can't do if it's in 1080p. And uh, let's see here. So I'm going to discuss my general, uh, the way I shop at a Goodwill. I've I originally started doing this uh, back in 2012. I was laid off from a job and was trying to come up with a way to make some extra cash and uh, got the bright idea that I would go and shop at Goodwills, buy stuff at ridiculous cheap prices and sell them on eBay. Uh, but apparently at the time the economy was in the shitter and so everybody and their brother had the same idea. So I, I, I did have some pretty good finds. I did sell some things for huge markup from what I paid, but never enough to really come close to breaking even on what I was spending on gas. I was driving a eight-cylinder pickup at the time, and 
my gas bill for driving around was pretty horrendous. And the competition was pretty bad. There was a lot of people doing the same thing. And it was not uncommon to go to a Goodwill and find people camped out, sitting in the Goodwills, waiting for them to come out with a new rack full of stuff. And people would just basically charge the racks and, you know, grab stuff. And to the point that Goodwill often has uh, signs that say, you can't touch anything until it's been put on the shelves. But in most cases, they, what they do now is they just take the, the rack out. They just set it, just leave it, and let people pick through it. And then after people have done that, then they put what's left on the shelf. Which makes more sense, because, I mean, why bother putting something on the shelves if people are going to just yoink it right, right away? And I've had people just take stuff from, you know, I was, went to reach for something and had people practically shove me out of the way to, to get to it. So what I generally do is I, first thing I do is I grab a cart. And the reason I grab a cart is that uh, you never know what you're going to find. And if you find something, you have to take control of it. You have to get it. Whether you think you might want it or not, you should get it in your cart. Uh, then you can take it off somewhere, or use your phone, and decide whether or not you want it and what it's worth, and you know whether or not they're overcharging for it. Because if you're if you're doing this to be fl a flipper, you you want to get things at the lowest price you can get, and if they're selling it at the same price that you can sell it for. There's no point in buying it sometimes. Uh, I no longer do the flipping. And so if you see me pass up things that to you might be valuable, that's nice, but I have no use for them. And I have no interest in selling them at this time. I do not need to. The uh, Once I... I get it in my cart, and I, you know, like I said, I'll figure out if it's worth the money. Like the other day, I, I found a brand new LED under cabinet light, never used, and it, they wanted five dollars for it. It normally sold for fifty-five dollars, and I'm sorry, forty-four dollars. So I bought it. Uh, And I've used it, but, you know, there's other things, like I've found stuff that in the past I would have bought just so I could resell, but I know I don't care about doing that anymore, so I just pass it. My basic interests are I'm looking for old stereo equipment, I'm specifically looking for certain stereo equipment, I'm not going to tell you what, and... Uh, old radios, old uh, ham radio equipment, usually for my own purposes. Um, anything unusual. I think of uh, Goodwills as a, a museum where you can purchase the exhibits. Now, let me think here's anything else. If, if I miss something, I'll put it in subtitles or continue this at another time let me think here um, I guess that's it for now if I think of anything else I'll I'll, I'll put it in another segment uh, if, if for any reason you see that the the video is janky crooked not pointing correctly at what I'm looking at I can't do much about that it's just what it is I can adjust this camera only so much, and then it, you know, however it settles in, that's what you're going to see. So I'll try my best to keep things in the screen, but uh, I, I probably will use something to point out what I'm actually looking at. And also, uh, there will be no audio in the stores because they all play 
over-the-air music and uh, copyright uh, will get me. So I will probably do a voiceover that I'll do later. And uh, we'll see how that goes. I, I only do one takes and I, I'm not very good at narrating after the fact. So uh, it may sound jilted and, and unnatural for the first couple of episodes. So anyways, looks like this store had a break in. Okay, I'm getting one of their janky carts and heading back to the electronics section. I pretty much, that's all I do, just go through the electronics section. Sometimes I hit the DVDs and stuff like that, but mostly just electronics. I make a quick pass, quickish pass. Kind of look around. The guy with the card is an employee. He's uh, actually taking stuff off the shelves. The first thing I spot is a uh, MCS turntable. I think it was about $12. Not something I need. MCS was, J I think, JC Pan JC Penny's uh, store or a uh, high end brand. A lot of the same old, same old stuff I've seen here at this place uh, many times some kind of speakers for a uh, portable record player or something like that. Uh, this is a Citizen LCD TV. Something that many years ago would have been interesting or cool to have and today is worthless. There's a uh, Simon game and a power or a monster power for a decent price but I don't care much for monster branded stuff. One thing I look for are HD radios. Uh, that's a uh, scanner antenna, but it's uh, missing the magnet for the bottom. As you'll see here, no magnet, which I could easily fix, but don't really need it. This is the section where tools, that's uh, some kind of kids or practice martial arts weapon. Hedge trimmers, drills, a jigsaw, but I think it's missing some parts. I already have two of them, so. Empty box. I always check boxes, toolboxes, cases, pick them up, see if they're heavy. If they're heavy, there's something in them, what's in them, who knows.
looking for lawn equipment. And of course this is kitchen stuff. Some exercise equipment. Looks like I need to slow my mo head movements down a little bit. Going a little fast. Nothing over in this area. Now we're going for a second pass. This is when I usually look a little more carefully at some things, just in case I miss something. I am looking for a, a certain type of home entertainment audio center. So I'm giving this a second look. It looks like it's all there. Would be interesting to mess with it, but just don't have the space. I already have a Sony needles in there and it's, it seems sharp. I'm looking for a specific type of uh, home entertainment audio system. I have one, the video, the display is fading and I want to get a replacement that's the exact same thing. So far I haven't been able to find one. Some kind of Nit Nintendo, probably uh, has a bunch of games built into it. I don't have time for that. So. This is some kind of, uh, looks like I need to look a little higher than I've been doing, but that's some kind of display DVD player or something. VR goggles, some janky keyboard. There's a couple of wheelbarrows here and this plastic one I almost thought about getting but as you'll see it's uh, broken. There's a couple spaces where it attaches to the bucket or the tub and it's uh, No good. I already have a wheelbarrow anyways. Just out of curiosity checking to see if they have got anything more in production. To the left there's a guy in there. He's That's where the uh, electro electronics testing is done. Goodwill does actually test their electronics in some fashion. Mostly they just see if they power on. They uh, don't do much more than that. And we're on the way out of the store, so... Okay, well that was the first store. Not much there. My voiceover will tell you why I did or didn't, well, I didn't buy anything. And, uh, I will be blurring out people's faces since, uh, 
I don't want people to be able to, if they somehow saw the video, to be able to have me take down the video or whatever. But if they're wearing masks, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother with it. So this first video is going to contain a lot of information about Goodwills and how they do stuff or whatever, and it won't be in any of the other videos. I'll just be linking back to it or referencing it if people want to know why I'm doing something or why something, they'll have to come back to this video. Uh, Goodwill has some protections in place to prevent people from uh, doing sticker swapping, at least here in the city I'm in. Um, your goodwill may differ. Uh, first thing is they're using super sticky stickers with that are segmented or perforated, so if you try to remove it, they, they're very difficult to remove unless they're on certain specific types of plastic they tear easily and it's very difficult to get once they're on very difficult to get them back on uh, the uh, they also if you do manage to get the sticker off and do something like try to go go find a, uh, an employee to get a new price put on it they put a secret mark on the uh, on most of their stuff which uh, I don't think I'll go into how you can read that, but I figured out how to read it. And so that's why if I look at something and tell you what the price is, but you don't see a, 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 a price tag on it, that's how I know. Uh, Goodwill's prices used to end in 99 cents. Now they end in 49 cents. That has to do with them wanting to round up the prices when you get to the register to for their charities and such. I don't really know how their charities work and um, it's not too much of a concern for me. Okay, store number two, right off the bat, employee says, welcome to Goodwill. Grab it in janky cart. Heading for the electronics. Oh, tags today are pink. I didn't mention that earlier. That means that uh, anything with a pink tag is 50% off. On Thursday, those tags would be worth a dollar. That's something unusual, a patio heater. Haven't seen one of those. Another employee asked him if he's uh, putting stuff on the shelves or taking it off. He's taking stuff off. Junky speakers. More of the same stuff. A lot of this has been around for a while. The pink tags, those are not the 50% uh, off tags. Those are actual tags. They uh, basically state that if you, you buy electronics and they don't work, all you can do is get uh, store credit. stuff 
that's a big turkey fryer on the bottom of that uh, cart he's taken. It's been in the in there for almost a month. Nobody wants it. A lot of unusual stuff. Some kind of pool pump. These stores regularly go through and, and clean off the shelves. So sometimes you'll you'll come in and uh, there'll be almost nothing left. They've just gone through and just wiped out everything that didn't didn't sell recently. I generally alternate uh, through the week. One day of the week I go north, next day I go south, next day north, and so on. Oh, these bags, are, these grab bags are oftentimes you can find some pretty interesting stuff in them. Uh, they, they can contain a lot of junk and they mix and match a lot of stuff that doesn't belong together. So you oftentimes end up having to buy stuff that you don't want. This is a battery powered lawnmower that if I remember correctly they wanted uh, probably 30 something dollars for. Which most people won't buy because the first thing they're going to have to do is go and get a uh, a new battery for it and the charger and unless you've already got one is that's going to be a lot of money so they skip it another employee emptying shelves i've uh, seen them when they empty the kitchen items uh they just toss some of the glass stuff into a big garbage can i think it goes to a recycler but i'm not sure so it's unusual to hear crash, crash, crash as they just haphazardly throw them away. Second pass. Thermostat. So, yeah, this is not really feeling it at this this location there's just tons and tons of junk filter of some kind I've noticed uh, that there will there will be trends um, where all of a sudden a lot of stuff shows up at all the goodwills. Uh, for a while, there were tons of uh, evaporators showing up every year after winter. It seems like everyone gets rid of their heaters they're space heaters so all of a sudden a pile of space heaters will show up recently a whole lot of uh, old ladies must have died because scads of sewing machines perfectly good sewing machines showed up at the goodwills you could pick up a really nice sewing machine from the 60s 50s 70s for 20 bucks and if it wasn't that my wife already had at the time two or three, <laughs> probably would have gotten her another one. But So, yeah, not much at the store. So we're going to head on out. Normally I do this with my wife. And, uh, 
it's kind of something we're doing since we're both retired. Uh, she buys stuff for relatives and I just buy things that interest me. So it's uh, it's not unusual for me to uh, not buy anything on an entire day. So I don't know, you know, if your goal is to watch me buy something, well then uh, you're gonna probably get bored with that. I'm just uh, kind of just whiling away the time until we can go do some traveling or something. Let's see if there's anything. There's a lot of information and I keep forgetting exactly what stuff uh, want to go over. Oh, okay, so we usually go twice a week. We go on Tuesday, which is Old People Day. Old people get an automatic 25% off, I think it is. And we, we go on Friday. Uh, I used to go on Thursdays because Thursday was when uh, tags were 50% off and, you know, certain tags, but I found that 99.9% .9 of the stuff that I was interested in never stuck around long enough to become 50% off. I'm sorry, actually Thursday was dollar, is dollar day. And 99.9% .9 of the stuff that I was interested in never got to Dollar Day. The other problem with going on Dollar Day is that <clears throat> some people, it's my theory, they, they show up and they buy just huge amounts of clothes. Because you can just load up a cart full of clothes with a dollar for, and get each one for a dollar. And they uh, either sell them at yard sales or I have it on a, a bit of inside knowledge that they uh, take them to Mexico and uh, sell them there for a fair bit of change. Uh, I know this because uh, for a while my brother and I we were doing some scrapping and we had some guys that were buying old computers that we got who would then take the computers into Mexico. They'd buy them for 20 bucks and take them to Mexico and sell them for like a hundred, two hundred dollars. And uh, that was fine with us because the twenty dollars was more than scrap value on the computers and we found that we couldn't get a hundred to two hundred dollars for a used computer in the in the US. And I didn't want to sell them on eBay. Selling on eBay sucks. Only do it when I have to. Okay, first thing is we grab a cart with twine and crap stuck in the wheels. Then grab another cart. And we'll head on back to the electronics section. Giant teddy bear.
crutches. We always have crutches. Guy with pants around his knees. People of Walmart have nothing on people of goodwill. Uh, this place has always got crowded shelves, but they it rarely has anything super good. I don't know whoever thinks it's a great idea to buy giant teddy bears. They always show up in the Goodwills. One of the things that I see a lot of are iPad clock radios or iPhone clock radios there's tons of them everybody and their brother apparently bought one and then I don't know if Apple changed their their product or what but then they all had to get they all got rid of them bowling pin. We always need a bowling pin. I didn't even notice that when I was there. And that is an appliance meter. It's used for testing the circuits in your house, the amp draw of an appliance, and your grounding. Nothing super incredibly special on these shelves or in the bags. Looking over to check the bench, see if anyone left anything over there. Uh, an LNA for a satellite dish. Hard hats. I don't know why people have been giving hard hats to Goodwills lately, but they have. This place is overdue to have their shelves cleared. There's a, a mark on this that indicates, I believe, uh, $39. Which it could be fixed up and they're worth the upwards of two hundred dollars but uh, I've already dealt with one of them yep, see thirty nine dollars seventeen dollars for a uh, weed eater missing spark plug And this one really irritates me. 
this is a MTD lawnmower and they want $89 for it. You can get a MTD lawnmower for uh, $99 on sale, a similar type. That one might have been the $129 model. Some interesting 60s bar stools. Who knows, probably worth a million dollars on Antique Roadshow. Coleman stove missing the grate could be fixed up no problem all the parts are available second pass Every time I see flashlights, I, for some reason, feel like I want to buy them. And then one day, I happened to be going through the house and realized that I had about 50 of them. Not all of them were exactly flashlights, but they things that could be used as flashlights. And then we have a fire truck. I wonder what's going on up here. I think we'll head out of the store and uh, take a look at that. This is an aid call. It's not a fire. Nice looking fire truck. Oh, that's not good. They left the drawer op the door open. Oh, that was interesting. An aid call from the fire department. Some guy in the laundry having some kind of problem. I uh, hear an ambulance, possibly. The bambulance. Uh, apparently, this uh, every so often, I guess it's towards the end of the month, they or it's every so often, so many months. I'm not really sure. They Goodwill goes through their racks and they pull off uh, stuff that's been sitting too long. If it doesn't sell within a specified time, goes through a couple of sales and discounts and whatever, they it, it's taken off the shelves. And I think it goes to the clearance center where uh, people fight over it like ravenous vultures. Uh, if you don't believe me, there's some... Uh, videos on YouTube. Just search for Goodwill Clearance Center to see what I'm talking about. All right, so let's get a janky cart. Nope, this one's a little too janky. 
Let's get a less janky cart. And this place actually had some carts. Oftentimes I come here and there's no carts. This is not one of the better Goodwills to go to. Not a big selection. I mean, this is one of the places I got one of my best scores, but uh, their electronic shelves are very bare. Not much to look at. Looks like we have a mic mixer, which in some other time I would have probably grabbed that. Those are uh, big server power uh, bars or plug strips. They plug into a 30 amp outlet. Oh, those are interesting. I I think I'm going to snag those. 350 for 20 of those. Talk about them later. Some kind of uh, remote control translator or controller from Radio Shack. I don't know what that is. It's a rack mounted, some kind of server thing. It's got a bunch of fans in it. typewriter fish tape lawn mowers and lawn equipment are usually way over on this side don't know what that was So, going for the second pass. But, you know, it's pretty obvious that there's, there's just not much here. I uh, picked up many months ago a brand new Oster oven. I think they're. It, normally cost $150 it's a, had digital controls convection heating as far as I can tell it was brand new barely been used maybe once or twice and it was only $13 pretty good score replaced my other countertop oven that we'd had for probably 15 20 years Well, that's about it for for this 
this place. It's time to check out and we'll see what these things are exactly. Alright, let's see what this is. I think I know what it is. But uh, for 349 I kind of couldn't pass it up. Could use them as gifts. They appear to be uh, screwdrivers. Yep, they're screwdriver sets. Huh. That's nifty. I think it'll even fit some bits I have. Three fifty for for ten of them. Pretty cool. All righty. There was a whole bunch of stuff that I was, uh, you know, when I was in the store, I was thinking of that I probably should bring up, but can't believe it, or I can't remember what it is when I get out to the car. So hopefully I'll remember and I'll put it in subtitles or something. Uh, anyways, hopefully this will be uh, something I do reoccurringly. Okay, I remembered one of the things, and that is if uh, you see something in the the stuff that I videotaped and you happen to know where I am or where this the store is, and you're thinking that you can go get it, that's fine with me. The one problem you're going to run into is that these videos are going to be anywhere from one to nine weeks uh, old by the time you see them since I tend to keep videos in reserve so uh, so I can have a steady stream of releases every week. Anyways, that's it.